We like the original Super U cross track, and Empress a based, butched up, soft rotor hatchback, enough that it won our subcompact SUV challenge in 2015. Now, a second generation cross track has arrived, and while it may look similar to the outgrowing one, it is indeed an all new car. Sitting on the new Subaru Global platform that will form the basis of nearly all of Subaru's future cars, the 2018 Crosstrek is more than 95% new. Again based on the Impreza, it's a compact hatchback with exceptional interior room and standard all-wheel drive. The change from Impreza to Crosstrek starts with the parts you can see. The Crosstrek's sheet metal shares some panels with the Impreza, but grey plastic wheel arches, bumper covers and rocker panels add some durability to the look. It sits visibly higher than the Impreza, with 8.7 inches of ground clearance. All the changes, like them or not, really do set it apart from the Impreza, it looks like a very different animal, and this is part of what its customers find appealing, according to Subaru. A lot of customers like that outdoorsy, rugged look, even if far more cross trucks are sold in urban markets than in rural ones. But that higher ride height helps when dealing with broken pavement and the travails of the urban jungle, as well, such as curbs and potholes. And for buyers who are genuinely outdoorsy, the low overall roof height helps when loading things onto the roof rack. Along with the new platform comes a new engine, although its specs will be familiar. Like the last Crosstrek, the new one comes with a 2.0-liter flat-four engine, this one making 152 horsepower and 145 pounds-feet of torque. That's up slightly in the horsepower department from the past model. Though not turbocharged, it does now feature direct injection. It can be mated to a standard 6-speed manual transmission, one gear more than last year's 5-speed or continuously variable automatic with the step gear function meant to make it feel and sound more like a traditional geared automatic. All-wheel drive is standard for both transmissions. I sampled both transmissions and have come to the rare conclusion that the CVD equipped model is the one to have. This is odd given my penchant for enjoying shifting on my own, but the problem here is the engine, not the transmission. My biggest beef with the old Crosstrek was that it couldn't get out of its own way, it was woefully underpowered with both the manual and automatic. This has not been solved with the new vehicle, as the 2.0-liter engine is still anemic. The engine is just gutless, merging onto a swift moving highway will be challenging, and don't even think of attempting to pass anyone on a hill or with a full load of passengers or cargo. From a standing start, it feels like acceleration can be measured with a calendar. If you've already got some momentum built, it's not quite so bad, the Crosstrek responds quickly when you power through a corner. The CVT is well matched to the engine, always keeping it on boil if you're driving aggressively, but you'll need to be prepared for it to rev its heart out as it tries to deliver what little power it has. There's little oomph below 2,500 revolutions per minute, and it seems to run out a little after 4,000 revolutions per minute. If you opt for the manual transmission, you'll be shifting it like mad to try and keep your speed up even on slight grades. Save yourself the onks and go for the CVT, it's a much more pleasant experience. The upside of the underwhelming acceleration is top of the pack fuel economy. The Crosstrek is EPA rated 27 slash 33 29s of a mile per gallon city slash highway slash combined with the CVT, 23 slash 29 25ths of a mile per gallon with the manual. Its 33 mile per gallon highway rating is tops for the AWD class, even besting competitors' front wheel drive models. I question whether anyone will get those numbers in practice, however, as they lol likely drive with a heavier foot than normal just to keep up with traffic. The engine performance is the only blemish on what has become a polished, quiet and surprisingly refined vehicle. Base and premium trims come with 17-inch wheels, and if you plan on doing any rough road driving or off-road exploring, this is the combination to have, though you can skip the larger 18-inch wheels, whose lower profile tires aren't nearly as bump-absorbing, especially off-road. It's remarkably compliant on two-track rough roads, soaking up bumps and not transmitting any unpleasant vibrations through the steering wheel. Credit the dramatically stiffer structure of the Subaru Global platform, which has allowed Subaru to get more creative with its suspension and steering tuning. On road or off, the Crosstrex steering is excellent. It uses a quick, 13 to 1 ratio, much sportier than most vehicles in its class and closer to the BRZ sports car than anything else in Subaru's lineup. 
this gives the cross track entertaining handling, it's eager to turn into curves, communicative when it's in them and easy to control when you get a little over eager on dirt roads. Just like the BRZ, it's slow, but once you build some speed, the car's handling characteristics make it highly entertaining. Maintain momentum in spirited driving, and it's actually fun to drive. The new Crossrex cabin is bigger than the last one. Nearly every dimension has been increased, and while it looks familiar, it's all new and much improved. The traditional benefits of Subaru interiors remain, a very low belt line and slim pillars, meaning outward visibility is outstanding in every direction. This is helpful on the highway but also useful off-road, as it allows you to see over the hood easily when negotiating tricky terrain. The Crossrex is exceptionally roomy compared with competitors like the Mazda CX-3 and Honda HR-V. It's far more comfortable, especially for backseat passengers, but newer competitors like the Jeep Compass and Nissan Rogue Sport are starting to really challenge it in this department. Like the Impreza, the new Crossrex receives Subaru's next-generation multimedia system. A 6.5-inch touchscreen display is standard and comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as Subaru's Starlink suite of apps that you probably shouldn't use while driving. Upgrade to a higher trim and you can get an 8-inch display and add navigation by TomTom, Tom, as well. It's finally a fully modern multimedia system, too. It no longer looks like it's behind the times, but for a brand that's going after millennial buyers, it's curious that there isn't more tech in this interior. There's no 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot for passengers' personal electronics, and there's only one USB port in the whole car. Those seem like curious oversights in an all-new vehicle targeted specifically at younger buyers.